Welcome to EasyLM Learning Simplified. My name is Ruth and today we are going to be talking on about the topic carbon and its compounds. And for today we are going to look at carbon 2 oxide. We will look at the preparation and also the physical properties of carbon 2 oxide. And then we are also going to tackle some questions. So let's begin. So carbon oxide is usually another oxide of carbon. Remember previously we talked about uh, carbon four oxide and also how it is prepared. So this is another oxide of carbon four oxide and it usually has three covalent bonds. And these covalent bonds have been bonded to oxygen atom. It's molecular in nature or it's a molecular substance and it's gaseous in nature and it's usually found in, in com, uh, it's found when you complete you completely burn fuels fossil fuels like charcoal petrol this tells us even where we are going to get into the next session so if you burn this fossil fuel in completely you get the carbon 2 oxide so in the laboratory we can be able to produce carbon 2 oxide by dehydrating and i want you to make to note the word dehydrating dehydrating methanoic acid which is also known as formic acid or uh, ethan 2 1 2 direct acid or oxalic acid using concentrated sulfuric acid and the concentrated sulfuric acid now is a dehydrating agent so let's look at the setup so the concentrated sulfuric acid is placed in a delivery, de delivery funnel or dropping funnel and it's dropped in methanoic acid and you can see carbon 2 oxide is being produced. So when you look at the reaction when methanoic acid is dehydrated or the water is removed, dehydrating means we remove any elements of water, we produce carbon 2 oxide only and water. But when the reaction is repeated with ethan 1 2 direct acid, the, the what we form is both carbon 2 oxide and carbon 4 oxide. And you can see there is an adjustment in the setup. In this case, we are using a conical flask containing sodium hydroxide because we need to remove the carbon 4 oxide that is being formed. Our purpose is to collect the carbon 2 oxide. In both setups, you can see the carbon 2 oxide has been collected over the water. So we are going to see later why this is possible. So the carbon uh, 2 oxide can also be prepared by reacting the carbon 4 oxide with charcoal. So carbon 4 oxide and charcoal react and there is a, a reaction uh, where carbon takes away the oxide in carbon 4 oxide to form carbon 2 oxide. So you can see also in this setup we have sodium hydroxide solution. If there is any carbon 4 oxide that passes excess, it's going to react with sodium hydroxide solution. So that the only gas that we collect is the carbon 2 oxide. So carbon 4 oxide reacts with carbon and then it forms carbon 2 oxide. So those are the three processes. So first of all, you notice we collected the carbon 2 oxide in all cases of our water. This is because it's slightly soluble in water. And then there is some setups. We had sodium hydroxide solution. In these setups, we use sodium hydroxide to absorb the excess carbon 4 oxide that is produced in the reaction. This is supposed to be 4. And then the concentrated sulfuric acid in the second method is used to remove elements of water and not only the first it's even in the first um, setup we used the concentrated sulfuric acid it is the dehydrating agent the gas that is produced is colorless and odorless and carbon 2 oxide is bubbled in lime water it's not going to form any precipitate actually this is the chemical reaction that can help to differentiate between carbon 2 oxide and carbon 4 oxide so you saw there is a test there is a conical flask that had uh, sodium hydroxide if we replaced it with calcium hydroxide you notice only the carbon 4 oxide is going to form a white precipitate with the lime water 
the carbon two oxide is just going to pass. So if we placed wet uh, litmus paper in a jar containing carbon four oxide and also the carbon two oxide, so you notice that the uh, wet blue litmus paper is going to remain blue while the red litmus paper is also going to remain red. This tells us the carbon two oxide produced is neutral in nature. It does not change the blue litmus paper to red like it would if it was acidic in nature. It does not ionize, so it doesn't have any hydro hydrogen ions in when it dissolves in water. So uh, some of the physical properties, we have mentioned some of them, but carbon dioxide is colorless and odorless. It's slightly denser than air. Uh, actually, its density is almost close to that of air. So if we were to collect the gas dry after drying it, we would collect it using a syringe. We would just pass it through concentrated sulfuric acid. So it has a very low boiling point of negative 101 degrees Celsius. Uh, this is because we have said before it's molecular, so it has a weak but a worse forces. So it is slightly soluble in water and it forms a neutral solution. So this gas is very poisonous. You notice that it combines with the hemoglobin to form carboxyhemoglobin, which prevents the formation of oxyhemoglobin, which is the one that transports the oxygen which will lead to suffocation. So we, remember, we are going to talk about this property like it's mentioned in the questions most of the time. This is because it's odorless in color. You can't see it, you can't smell it, yet it's very poisonous. So some of the questions are describe how carbon dioxide can be distinguished from carbon two oxide using calcium hydroxide solution. So we said you bubble the carbon two oxide and carbon four oxide in separate test tube containing lime water, uh, carbon four oxide will turn the lime water into a white precipitate while carbon two oxide will not turn the lime water into a white precipitate. So you finish your statement, don't leave them hanging like carbon two oxide will not, will not do what. So make sure you're always leaving your answers in complete statements. The following setup was used to prepare carbon two oxide in the lab. So we have the concentrated sulfuric six acid, we have the ethanoic acid, we have liquid X and carbon monoxide. So liquid X and its value, so this is ethandioic acid. So we said you're going to produce two gases. It decomposes to produce carbon four oxide and carbon two oxide. Our purpose is not to collect the carbon two oxide, the carbon four oxide, sorry, but the carbon two oxide. So this liquid is going to be anything, sodium hydroxide or potassium hydroxide that is going to dissolve uh, or absorbs the carbon dioxide produced. We do not want to collect it. Explain why the gas is collected by over water. We said it is slightly soluble. Next, in an experiment, carbon dioxide gas was passed over heated charcoal and the gas produced was collected as shown. So we have carbon four oxide reacting with charcoal. We said this is another method of producing carbon two oxide. Write the equation for the reaction that took place in the combustion. So we said it's carbon four oxide, it's gas plus carbon to produce carbon two oxide. 
So we need to balance this, so we put a 2 here. Name another substance that can be used instead of sodium hydroxide. We can use potassium hydroxide. Carbon 2 oxide is described as a silent killer. State one physical property of carbon 2 oxide that makes it a silent killer. It is colorless and odorless. Write the formula of the oxide, which is the silent killer. The formula is CO. CO. Study the diagram below and use it to answer the questions that follow. So we have carbon 4 oxide and carbon 2 oxide is passed through concentrated hydroxide solutions and then gas P is collected. Two reagents that are reacted to produce both carbon 4 oxide and carbon 2 oxide. So we can react concentrated sulfuric acid and ethane. ethane. 1, 2, dioic acid. So it's the ethane dioic acid, not the uh, methanoic acid or the formic acid. Write the rea reaction, that's the equation for the reaction that takes place in the wash bottle. So in the wash bottle, we can see uh, carbon dioxide gas reacting with sodium hydroxide to produce sodium carbonate uh, plus water. So we balance this. So we put a 2 here and it's balanced. Give a reason why carbon 2 oxide is not easily detected. It's colorless and odorless. That's the reason. So this brings us to the end. So see you in the next lesson.